Alright, Shalom. First, I want to give all praises to Yehawah, Barsham Yehaw Shai, Barsham Rakar Kadash. I want to give double honours to the apostles and the elders of Great Moorstone. And uh, Shalom to the elect out there pushing this word, man. Uh, I'm just going to get right into it. This is um, um, Revelation chapter 11, verse 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Now, the scriptures. Um, are talking about woe, okay. Now, when you look into what the word woe means, it, got, it means destruction, okay. So it says the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Now, what is the known as the the great destruction upon the earth? You got World War One, and you got World War Two, okay. And World War Three hasn't happened yet, but it's prophesied that it's coming quickly, that it is going to happen. So there's no way that um, these leaders that are in the world going back and forth playing these, you know, smoke and mirror games, they, you know, regardless of what they do, it's been prophesied by Yahweh Bashmi al it, 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 it has been commanded already in the heavens that there is going to be a World War Three on this earth among men, okay? And, 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 and when that World War Three happens, the ICBM missiles, okay, the, the, the nuclear capability of these countries are going to be fired at each other, man. Okay, and we're we're gonna we're gonna get that. It's gonna be fired against each other, and that's gonna cause a destruction just before, um, just before the Lord comes back, man, in these chariots. America, which is, uh, you know, Babylon in the scriptures, which is also known spiritually as Edom and as Sodom, which I can get. That 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 um, you know, um, great city, as the scriptures call it. That's gonna that's gonna be completely and utterly destroyed, man. Okay, because because of the wickedness that is that that has been done in that land. You got you got um, the transatlantic slave trade that happened. Okay, you had uh, the the murdering, massacring, and and, and um, thieving of um, the the so-called Native Americans, which are you know the tribes of Reuben and Gad and so on and so forth. Um, all the other different tribes that were over there that were basically um, getting oppressed, put under slavery, put, put and killed at the edge of the sword. By who? By the so-called white man, Esau, in the scriptures. And he's got to pay for that, man. Okay? It's in prophecy that Babylon's going to be completely destroyed, man. Let me just get quickly Revelation 11 and 8 while I'm here. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom, and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now, so why is it called Sodom and Egypt? It's because, first of all, let's look at, take an example of um, the fact that the law was passed so that in all the states in the United States you could um, have um, gay marriage. That land over there is, is you know, you've got transgender, um, transgenderism that they're pushing hard over there. That place is, is, is Sodom, man, spiritually. Okay, the physical... The, 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 the Sodom of ancient times was destroyed. And the, and the same thing is going to happen to America, man. And why is it called Egypt? Because our people, the, 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 the Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans, which are their byword names, their real names being, you know, the, 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 the tribes of Israel, okay, the sons of Jacob, the sons of Israel, the Israelites, they went into, into hardcore bondage, into slavery, man. They got killed by the edge of the sword in, the, in that land and all around the world. But specifically in a majority of our people in a mass over in that land, man. Okay? And they're going to have to pay for that. Right, what was I going to get? This is um, Second Ezra chapter 16. No, 16? No. I'll get that later. This is Second Ezra chapter 15. And I'll start from... I'm going to start from 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. Who's the Lord's people? That's talking about the Israelites. You so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans, man. And then anyone else that descends through their fathers, through that line. It says, I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Now, is that talking about the, the ancient Egypt? No. Okay. The Lord doesn't want to suffer them to live 
continue living in the land of in, in Babylon, man. Okay, that's why you got the elect over there in the in the land of Babylon. Okay, in America, you got the elect of Israel over there that are going to be brought out of it. That's why when the Lord said when He returns, He was going to say, "Come out of her, my people," so you're not you're not partaker of her sins. The Lord is hey, that's what that's what we're doing right now, man. We're com we're coming we're coming out of her, man. The ways of Babylon, that's that is making the whole world drunken. We're coming out of those ways and coming back to the Lord, man. So we don't we're not a partaker of its sins, man. Because you know, otherwise you're going to be a partaker of the judgment, and and America is going to be completely and utterly destroyed with nuclear uh, fire, man. And uh, that's in um, Jeremiah, man. This is. Back in a uh, second Ezra's, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and will destroy all the land thereof. So there you go. It, all the land's going to be destroyed, man. That's prophecy. And it, and if you notice, it says and smite Egypt with plagues as before. Now, if you go back into um, the books of Moses, you will read in our history that the Lord plagued Egypt, the land of Egypt over there in Africa, because we were in hardcore bondage there, man. Right after the time of Joseph, for you know hundreds of years. So it's not talking about that Egypt. It's talking about. Um, it's talking about um, smite Egypt with plagues as before. In fact, let me get a quick precept, so we get some understanding on that. This is Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight, verse sixty-eight. And the Lord, so these, what I'm reading now was curses that were basically put on um, the Israelites by the Lord, the Most High, because if we didn't follow his commandments and his ways, and we, and we didn't do that, we went, we, we went off, man. So this, is, this was the curses that were going to be put, put upon our people, and this is one of them. You can read that in Deuteronomy 28, man. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, who did that happen to en masse in the world? That happened to the Negroes. Okay, over in West Africa, over in Europe. Okay, they got brought in the, the transatlantic slave trade. They got brought over into the into the land of um, into um, America, man. Okay, to serve under hardcore slavery, man. And let's see what it says. It says, "And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships." So we wouldn't go if we were going back into. The, so you got scoffers out there saying, oh, you know, that come up and they say that's the land of Egypt. We never went as a people back into the land of Egypt in mass. We never went with ships. You can walk into Egypt. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you, as in no man shall redeem you. That's what that word buy there means, man. Ain't no one going to be able to save you out of that, man. Okay? No man is going to be able to save you out of that. Now, when the Lord returns, the Lord, Lord says that in the scriptures, it says, I shall not meet thee as a, them as a man. He's, he's going to come as a power. Okay? So, when the Lord comes back, he's going to save us, man. He is the redeemer. He is the savior, man. His name is Yahweh Shaima, which means he, he, he um, saves, basically. Okay? Let's go back to uh, Second Ezra. Back in Second uh, Ezra 15. Egypt shall mourn. See, I wanted to go into something else uh, as a spirit. I'm going into this, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. Because I really, I want to talk about this World War Three, man. But, you know, America's going to be destroyed, man. Okay? It's going to be destroyed by, completely destroyed by thermonuclear fire, man. As, as the scripture says, man. The whole land is going to be destroyed, man. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. Okay, well, let's get that. What's what's the um, what's the play talking about? See, the scriptures. To understand the script, the scriptures, first of all, the Lord's got to be dealing with you. Second of all, the Lord has got to um, put the spirit on you to understand the teachings of men. Men have got to teach you these understandings through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem And um, then, you know, you the Lord, when the Lord's dealing with you, how do you understand the scriptures? Isaiah 20, 28, man. It says. Um, uh, precept upon precept okay that means you, you read a little bit here you read a little bit there and then that, the whole book comes together man okay that's how you gain the understanding now where was I uh, 
Zechariah. And Zechariah. 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 I got the um the Urim with me, but I just you know just prefer to just use the book right now because sometimes you just, you know you gotta just practice flicking these pages, man. Right, this is Zechariah chapter fourteen, verse twelve. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Right? So we just we just read that. Let's read that again. <clears throat> uh to un this is to gain understanding. This is two different scriptures, two different things, but this is to understand that, that, that again understanding of what the plague is that the Lord is referring to. It says, Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. Right? Uh, let's read that again. Zechariah 14 and 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Now, is that talking about some kind of disease that suddenly just, you know, you start melting? No. That's talking about the thermonuclear fire, man. Like, if you, um, one example of that, if you want to see a visual of that. In Terminator 2, I think it's called Judgment Day. Terminator 2, you've got Sarah Connor. She sees a vision of a, a nuclear bomb being dropped, man. Okay, an atomic bomb. And when that ICBM gets dropped, and it's the, fire, the flame of fire is coming towards her, she's holding onto the railings. Her, her, she, her, you know, her eyes get melted away in, in her sockets and uh, all of that, man. All as it describes here, that's what happens to her, man. Okay, her flesh just get torn off her and she just get, you just get bones right in there until, until it gets messed up, man. You know, and that's what's, hey, that's what's coming to, <laughs> that's what's coming to the the people over there in the, in the land of America and 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 around the world, man. Okay, but especially over there in America in Babylon, man, for the wickedness that they're doing, man. That's the plague. Done on that. Yeah. Let's go back to this. Back in Second Ezra 15, verse 13. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fell through the blasting and hell with a fearful consolation. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men. And invading one another. Let's look up that word sedition. Sedition. Let's see what that is. Rebellion, uprising, revolt. Concerted attempt to overthrow civil authority. Violent strife between factions. Civil or religious disorder. Riot, rebelliousness against authority. Civil disorder, dissension, strife, rebellion, mutiny. A going apart, separation. Okay, that's in the uh, online etym etymology dictionary, man, for the word sedition. So it says, For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Now, there is going to be race riots, man, okay, in the time of World War Three, man. When, uh, as this thing becomes more and more uh, heavy, okay, and more and more things are happening in the world, more bombs are being dropped and so on and so forth, eventually it's going to come to a point where martial law is declared, man. And there's all manner of madness going upon the earth, man. Okay? And you're going to you're gonna have... That's when people are going to go back to, the, you know, who they are, man. Okay? The, you know, Elam's going to be with Elam. Moab's going to be with Moab. Okay? And they're gonna, you know, they're going to go at it, man. Because these, these nations don't they, don't... they don't respect each other. They don't like each other, man. This is... A, these lands, they're, they're basically just a melting pot where all these people are put together and have this veneer, this fake, um, fake so-called respect for each other, you know, getting along. But hey, you know, when when they're behind closed doors, okay, they're cursing you out behind your back, man. Because we're we're different. We're designed that way, man. All these different nations, okay, and especially these nations are are, are, are looking down upon Israel, okay. Back talking about Israel, definitely. Because a lot of these nations, they look at the so-called white men, you know, uh, for, for answers, man. But when it comes to Israel, they look at us like we're pieces of shit, man, okay? You so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. But it's cool because um, the scriptures say that Jake, uh, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow us. So we got, so we got next, That's how I'll, I'll say it like that, okay? The kingdom of heaven, man. 
This is uh, verse 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Right? For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and the men shall be afraid. Okay? Especially in these cities, people in these cities are, are majorly proud, man. Okay? You start going out into the countryside, people might be a bit more, you know, have a bit more of a conversation with you or something. But people are so proud over here, you know, I'll say like in London, for example, no one even talks to each other here, man. They've just got this, this stiffness about them, you know. But yeah, there's going to be martial law, man. Okay. You're going to get troops cordoning off certain areas, blocking certain routes, man. A man ain't going to be able to just go up in whatever he wants, man. Okay. And these and these uh, these cities, these houses that are going to be destroyed, they are going to be troubled, man. And men are going to be afraid, man. Okay. Because I was reading, you know what? I was reading about World War Two, right? Which I'm going to go into certain things after I read the scripture. And what I did is, now, in the scriptures it says that uh, this time that's coming, this World War Three, this destruction, is going to be like no other time before, okay? So, you can't really make a comparison to, um, you know, the, the previous wars, the, the two wars before. However, in a time of, of, of great distress and war, there were some things that were happening that, were, that pertain onto what's going to happen in, according to the scriptures. And I'm going to go into that a little bit, you know, Lord willing. Now, it says, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbour, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Okay, so there's going to be a famine, man. Okay, there's going to be a famine of the word because, hey, we ain't going to be out on the highways and byways. The prophets, the Lord's prophets ain't going to be on the highways and byways like that, man, okay, in that time. That's when you're going to be seeking your own salvation, man. Okay, that's when you're going to be, it's going to be between, be between you and the most high, man. Okay. Well, it's already like that, but it ain't going to be no, low, you know, meeting up every week and doing this and that. And it ain't going to be none of that, man, going on. Okay. The Lord's got to be with you so that you, if you're of the elect, you're going to be saved. Out of whatever bullshit that you go through, whether it's you go into concentration camp, whether you need to get your head chopped off, whether you need to be in the woods, whether you are in the city, whatever it is, man. Uh, right, I'm just going to read this quick article of that point about the lack of bread and people spoiling each other, right? Now, this is uh, this article is on history ex historyextra.com and it's called The 10 Facts About Crime on the Home Front in the Second World War, speaking about uh, uh, over here in the, in the United Kingdom, okay? Now, from blackouts to blitz homes, the Second World War presented a new world of opportunity for the criminally inclined, and the war years saw an unprecedented rise in British crime. Let me jump down a bit. So, the Second World War was a golden period for British crime. Between 1939 and 1945, reported crimes in England and Wales rose from 303,711 to 478,394, an increase of 57%. What was, behind this, what was behind this huge jump? The blackout and the bombs were the most obvious factors, and murder, rape, robbery, burglary and theft all flourished in the dark and the chaos. And that's going to come back, man, in a big way, okay? All these people walking around thinking everything's okay, yeah? Thinking they're, that they're in peace and safety. <laughs> in fact, let's get that. Um... This is 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So, <laughs> when people are walking around, you know, think, you're thinking everything's all dandy, all good, you can just live your life and go about your business, that's when things are just going to turn overnight, man. Overnight this thing can turn, man. Okay? You, be, you go back, you go to sleep one day, you had a hard day at work, you go to sleep, you had some, you, had some, you know, you might have a, a nice roast, some potatoes, you go to sleep, you wake up, and there's martial law troops out on the, and tanks out on the fucking street, man, and people asking you for your fucking passport, or your driving license. Who are you? Where are you going? You know? 
It can turn overnight. All you, just, all you need is a reason. Okay? One attack, one false flag, and that's it. It's just really just down to the Lord. When, when the Lord wants it to happen, man. Okay? Then the elites will make their move. The war brought it with a vast raft of new... With it, a vast raft, raft of new restrictions and regulations which many people chose to break or circumvent. Rationing of various staples of life offered huge opportunities to fraudsters, forgers and thieves and created a vibrant black market. Now I'm just going to go into two points. Looting was, number one, looting was rife. On one day in November 1940, 20 of the 56 cases listed for hearing at the Old Bailey concerning looting offences. The total number of cases for the four months of the Blitz to the end of December was 4,584. 4, so people were looting each other, man. I'm just going to give an example of one business establishment. When the Cafe de Paris restaurant and nightclub in Piccadilly, which is still there today, suffered a direct hit by the um, Luftwaffe in 1941, rescuers had to battle their way through looters that were fighting to tear rings and other jewellery from the dead revellers. There were many cases in which looters weren't just criminals and members of the public. Okay, so... It, Oh, okay, so it wasn't just cases of people, just, you know, known criminals. It says firemen, wardens, and other members of the defense forces often joined in too. So you've got these policemen, and, you know, so-called protecting the people. They're going to be looting people too, man. Everyone's going to go back to that, to that, to, 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 you know, all that veneer of fake is going to leave, man, okay, in that time of chaos, okay? People are going to go back to let them demons, um, Come out, man. They're going to bring the demon face out, man. Killers had a field day. With cities and towns plunged into darkness every night, killers had a field day. A young airman, Gordon Cummins, was nicknamed the Blackout Ripper and roamed the bomb-ravaged streets of London in search of young women to murder and mutilate. Gang activity increased. I'm not going to read that, but yeah. <laughs> Um, this is the one I want to read verse 5 rationing led to thefts the most significant and lucrative black market activities centred on the long list of staple products subject to rationing food, petrol and clothing rationing was administered through ration books and coupons <clears throat> these provided forgers and thieves with great opportunities in 1944 14,000 newly issued ration books were stolen in a raid they were sold for an estimated profit of 70,000 roughly equivalent to 3 million today Forgery took place on a, a small and large scale, but was hard to pin down. A rare major prosecution took place in 1943, when 19 men were accused of involvement in a wide range of ra ranging racket of selling forged clothing coupons. Now I don't have to read more of that, but basically, a ration is going to come back in a, a big way, man. Okay, and you know, um, we got we can't forget about the chip, the mark of the beast, spoken of in Revelation 13, man. Okay. That's the RFID chip being implanted into the, into the people, because that's going to have something to do with the ration and, and, and the system that will the, the Internet of Things, the the system that has been designed for this coming um, time, man. Okay, because that is the agenda of the of the of the elites, you know, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, so on and so forth, man. Those international banking families. I'll read this title as well quickly. Con men took advantage. That's why. See, that's why in the scriptures it says that. Uh, knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times. Because the scriptures talk, talk to you about how to suss things out and deal with, uh, you know, men that are trying to basically be forces or, or tricksters. Trying to con you out of something. So just talk about don't go into a, you know, don't go into a, a basically a certain, you know, a tight space with, with someone that, you know, um, I forgot what that scripture is, man. But basically the, the scriptures give you, um, knowledge and wisdom on how to deal with certain situations man okay and through those and that is that is that is what's going to be with you in that time man okay what the lord's giving you in that time that's going to be your defense okay these words man i'm done on that let's go let's go to this um this is i don't see i don't want to make this too long but i i've got to read this this is second ezra chapter 16 verse 1 Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Gird up yourselves with clothes of sack, cloth, cloth, sack and hair. Bewail your children and be sorry, for your destruction is at hand. A sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? No one. Ain't no one going to be able to turn it back, man, because the Lord is sending this sword, man. 
A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? No one. Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? Okay. May any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood, or may anyone quench the fire in stubble when it had begun to burn? May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. Now, who, what's the arrows that the Lord's talking about? He's talking about them ICBM missiles, man. Because, hey, when this vision was seen, the, the ancient prophets, they would see these missiles and they would describe it from the closest thing they have at the time, which was an arrow, man. And if you look at an ICBM missile, that it looks basically like an arrow flying through the sky, man. The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? Okay, you got all these anti-defense missile systems and all that. Ain't none of that going to work in that day, man. Okay? The angels are going to make sure that ain't going to work, man. Because the Lord has sent these plagues, man. A fire shall go forth from his wrath, and who is he that may quench it? He shall cast lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? The Lord shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? The earth quaketh, and the foundations thereof. The sea arises up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also, before the Lord and before the glory of his power. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp, and shall not miss. None of them miss, not, not one of those missiles are going to miss. When they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. So can you shoot an, can you, can an archer shoot an arrow? From one end of the world to the other end of the world? No. So that's how we know it's talking about the ICBM missiles. you got to be, you know, you got to be, the Lord's got to be dealing with you, man. you got to be spiritual to be understanding these teachings, man. Okay? Which are taught to us by who? Our apostles and elders at Great Millstone, man. But you got guys that want to question their teachings. You, look, don't question the apostles' teachings, man. The Lord is dealing directly with their men. They're, they're, they're the major prophets, the high prophets, man. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? That's what Ezra is saying, man, the prophet, because he's seen, he's seen this destruction. Like spoken of in Daniel, man. He said that like, never, like, no other destruction ever before, man. No time before. The beginning of sorrows and great mournings. And the beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars. And the powers shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. See, Christians don't like to deal with all this. They like to live in that veneer, that fake veneer of, of, of you know, everything is alright and love everybody and all that, man. The Lord ain't down with that, man. The Lord is, is a man of war, okay? There's chariots up in, in the heavens. The angels are preparing, man, okay? They're going to come back with you. Uh, he's going to send his son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord. He's going to come and he's going to come with the, the chariots of the angels and he's going to lay the smack down on this place, man. Let me see if I can get a couple of scriptures on that quickly. Revelation 1 and 7, behold, he cometh with clouds. Who's that he? Yahweh Shai, the, the, the one that the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so are man. This is Revelation chapter 19. Uh, right, 19 verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Who's that talking about? That's talking about Yahweh Shai coming in that chariot, man. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness doth he judge and make war. Who's that talking about, man? It's talking about Yahweh Shai. It says, His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. So hold on a second. 
So the law's going to come back to do what? To, to, to do democracy? No, man. America's going to be completely destroyed, man. The Lord is coming back with the armies of heaven to lay the smack down, to lay hold onto this place, man. To put nations into slavery, man. To kill. He's coming with a fire, as it's, as it's written in Isaiah 66. I can go in and keep going into this, man. But hey, this goes into the time of World War Three, man. Okay, it's gonna be Marshall. Hey, we're coming into that time, man. Things are already, economies already moving a certain way. You know, you know, things are just being geared, and it's just gonna take one little thing to just set it all off, man. Okay. You know, I hope that's been edifying. Um, until next, you know, into the next lesson, you know, through the spirit and power of Yabash, me, I hope that's been edifying and. Double honor to the possum, so double honor to the possum. Elders a great monster, you know. Um, shalom to the elect, man. Shalom.